we started having some turbulence and stuff and I figured it was normal because it was a small plane and they knew what they were doing. They really did know what they were doing. It's just, it still scared me and I was sending out texts to my friends and stuff and was like, dude, I'm, gonna, I'm totally gonna die. Like, this is messed up, this is so bumpy. And that's when I sent that text to my boyfriend. That was from the plane. Yeah, I was on the plane and I took that picture. We, and our plane would just kind of like drop a little bit like it would be flying and then it would just kind of uh. So then when we started getting into those mountains, that's when it started getting the scariest because I lost service. So I couldn't really, you know, talk to anybody anymore. And I was like, well, we'll just fly through here. It'll be good. And it got cloudy and they were just trying to avoid clouds. And we almost crashed the first time, but he kind of did like a really quick turn. And that was so scary. And I was crouching behind his seat and, um, just, yeah, kind of kept the mindset that, you know, they know what they're doing, it'll be okay. I didn't expect anything bad to happen, really. I was still scared, though. No clouds opened up. I just remember it was white, and then, you know, because we were right in the trees, I saw trees. And then that's when we crashed. Like, at the very last minute and stuff, he was like, well, we're not, I don't know where I am. We're going to crash into the side of one of the mountains if we don't try to go up. So we started going up, and that's when we crashed. Was, everything was white, we started going up and then we crashed and I don't, the impact didn't knock me out or anything and everything was relatively quiet. I just, I can, I can think of the sounds of things crashing, but um, I was relatively protected be, behind that seat. I was seat belted in too, but I don't, I don't know how I actually got out of the plane, but as soon as the fire came, which was just a couple like seconds after we crashed, I was... I didn't even try to grab anything. I just scrambled out of the plane. My initial response was to go and try to help them out. Um, at one point, uh, what point did you um, realize that, that you couldn't, that wouldn't be possible uh, and you'd have to leave? When they died, because, you know, they both kind of stopped, you know, functioning and asking for help. Like, Grandma stopped way before because she was on the far side and I couldn't get to her unless I pulled grandpa out and I couldn't pull him out because he's a lot bigger than me and I burned my hand really bad and I was starting to hurt and it was just so hot and so how long uh, did you immediately um, leave there and uh, try to find water or um, do you stick around that general area for a while the smells and just the panic just made me want to leave. I immediately left and was trying to listen for a freeway and started just going downhill and I couldn't hear anything so I looked for a stream. The stream that you followed all the way? Um, I followed the same stream the entire way down. Um, and then what did you do at night? Did you keep going or did you, how, did you try to sleep or what? Um, at night, it was way too cold to keep moving, and all of my clothes were soaking wet from walking through that stream and falling in and going through all the branches and stuff, which were all wet because it's wet up there. And so at night, I stripped down to nothing but like my tank top and underwear, and I would wring out my clothes and try to hang them up on branches, but you know, it's cold, so they wouldn't even dry out. And so I just pulled my knees to my chest and pulled my, like, sweater, my, my cardigan sweater thing over myself and my tank top over myself and just wrapped my arms around and, like, breathed, like, tucked my head down and breathed into my shirt to try to keep warm. And I didn't sleep much, really. I mean, I'm on the ground and it hurt and my, the first night was when my hand started burning a lot, like the adrenaline kind of started to die down and my hand wouldn't stop burning. So the sleeve of my sweater was wet, like with all that cold water, so I wrapped it around my hand to keep it from burning. I mean, what were you thinking during all of this? Were you, um, you just were focused on getting to the highway or? I, I, mean. I was certain I was gonna die. I was thinking I was going to die, and I was going to die at 16 years old without doing anything really important with myself and with all these loose ends, and it made me feel terrible. And I felt kind of selfish, and you know, that first day was the day that I was initially mourning my grandparents and stuff. There's a lot of crying, 
that's probably a part of what dehydrated me was because I was crying for probably the entire day and you know blaming myself for their their deaths because you know they're the ones that wanted to fly me and they didn't deserve anything like that to happen to them and I love them a lot. Was there a point when you started to um, get some hope that you were going to be able to get out of it? That didn't happen until the next day. I woke up the next morning and I was super groggy and got dressed and felt pretty crappy, honestly. And I was just moving for a few hours and then I started to feel like it was too cold and I just like laid down again and I was like, this is it. And I was just certain I was gonna die. I was just laying there like, this is hypothermia. I shouldn't have gotten wet and I should have known that this isn't what you're supposed to do and I should have not panicked and I was just thinking like this is it I'm gonna die without having said goodbye to anybody that I care about and with all of this stuff left a mystery and it was terrifying and like I was so 100% certain I was gonna die and I wanted to just give up and I don't know what made me get like a sudden boost of motivation, but I think it was because I, I was next to that stream, so it sounded like a freeway. It sounded like helicopters and stuff, and it sounded like a helicopter, so I got up and was looking around, and I just got like this sudden boost of motivation. I was just so certain that it was a helicopter and that I was going to be found, and I got really angry, kind of like, this isn't fair, I don't deserve to die this way without having any kind of, you know, closure on anything and stuff, and I just was like, no, I'm not going to die, I'm not going to die, I can't do this, and I can't do this to anybody, I can't do this to my loved ones, I can't do this to myself, and I started moving for the rest of the day. I was walking and I saw a bridge which goes over that stream that was following the entire way and I was, that, I think that's the Easy Pass trail and I followed the trail up a little bit and found the parking lot and that led to the freeway and I was out trying to get a ride for about an hour but nobody would stop. Were you trying to like weigh them down or were you just standing there? Or? I was trying to wave people down, I was trying to like you know, I'm hurt, I'm all burned up, but I guess I, a part of me can't blame them for not stopping because I looked pretty messed up and disgruntled and scary and it's like one of those scary movies where, you know, some girl jumps out into the freeway and it's like, you gotta stop and it must have been weird. About how far um, was the crash site from um, the highway? Like how, long, how far did you hike? That's not something I know. Um, the guys that picked me up said that from the top of that mountain, they said probably was about 4,000 feet, but I'm not positive how many miles it was. I just know that I went from dawn to dusk. Like I was from, I was moving the entire time. It was daylight. And so on this highway, about how many people or how many cars um, drove by and uh, didn't pick you up? I can't say for sure, I just know it It was probably around an hour that I was out there and it started getting really difficult to stand so I went back down into that parking lot because there was a car down there and I figured somebody would come back to their car but nobody did. I was just sitting by the sign and that's when I started having problems like moving and started hurting. They, they pulled down into the parking lot, they were going to go hiking and um, I got up, I started getting all weepy again because it hurt so bad to stand up and I went over and told them that like three days ago I was in a plane crash and started talking to them and you know they it, they were very 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 nice about it and they gave me a Gatorade and offered me food and said that they would drive me to wherever they could get service and try to call somebody and that turned out to be like the Mazama store and they called people and they stuck around with me basically until I was with the paramedics.